All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for Harvard Extension School's webinar today, which is going to be focused on how to prepare for fall registration. My name is Sean Cleary, and I'm the Assistant Director of Enrollment Services here at DCE, which is the Division of Continuing Education. And I'm joined today by Desmina Matsouris, who is one of our team coordinators in the Office of Enrollment Services. We are going to be presenting on all aspects of course registration today, and we're super excited to have so many of you here um, because we hope that this is going to give you a lot of great information about things that you can start working on now in advance of registration and information that will be helpful both during and after the registration process. Um, before we dive into today's agenda, I do want to go over a few quick housekeeping remarks. The first is that we're recording today's webinar. So a few days from now, you should be receiving an email, which will be sent to the address that you registered for, that is going to contain the recording of today's webinar. Uh, we are going to send everything out to be closed captioned first um, for accessibility purposes, and then you'll be receiving the email with the recording, and we'll also be posting it on the Harvard Extension School YouTube page as well. Uh, also, if at the bottom of your screen, you should see a bar that has a Q&A button. If you have any questions that you'd like to submit to our team today, please use the Q&A feature for this. Um, we have some of our enrollment services specialists here who will be fielding questions throughout the webinar. Um, a couple things when it comes to questions, um, we are going to do our best to get to as many questions as possible today, but there's probably going to be some that we don't get to. At the very end of the webinar, we will present you with our contact information and ways to connect with our team and enrollment services. So we hope that that's helpful for you to have in case we didn't get to your question today. Um, we're also asking that you keep the questions in the Q&A box more general. Um, we know that some of you may have questions that are very specific to your academic goals and your current situation. Those questions are kind of best tailored over the phone or through email, just so we can provide you with all of the very specific details that you'll need in order to get started. All right, so with that, um, I'm going to dive into today's agenda. Um, as I mentioned at the start, um, as everyone was getting logged in, we are going to be with each other until 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, so over the next hour. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things related to registration. Um, but before we dive into registration content, I do want to provide you with a quick overview of the Division of Continuing Education and also of the Enrollment Management Team, which is the team that Despina and I both work for. And then for the meat of our presentation today, we're going to be talking about all the steps that you'll need to take before, during, and after registration to ensure that your registration process is as smooth as it can be. We're going to close by doing some frequently asked questions. These are questions that were submitted by everyone who registered, so we hope that they'll be um, a great resource for you. And we'll close with some additional resources that we hope are helpful for students who are looking to pursue a degree program or one of our certificate programs. So to start first, um, just a very quick overview of the Division of Continuing Education. There are four parts of DCE. Um, Harvard Extension School, which we're going to be focused on today, is one of them. Also in the umbrella of DCE is Harvard Summer School, Professional Development Programs, and Harvard's Institute for Learning and Retirement. Harvard Extension School offers undergraduate and graduate degree and certificate programs. And for the upcoming 2022-23 academic year, we are going to be offering over 1,000 open enrollment courses, both on campus and online. Um, so the current summer term that we're in right now is actually the first time that we've been offering on-campus courses um, since the start of the pandemic. Um, so we're excited to extend this into the extension school and offer on-campus courses during the fall and spring semesters as well. Harvard Summer School is what we are currently working in right now um, here at DCE. Um, the summer term is where students can earn credit towards extension school academic offerings, but it's also super popular for students who are coming from other institutions who want to earn summer credit. We have over 400 courses being offered this summer, um, both on campus and online. And these courses are pretty accelerated. So if you're looking for that in the future, they're either seven weeks or three weeks long, whereas the extension school courses are typically about 15 weeks long. With our professional development programs, these are majority two-day long on-campus and online non-credit programs, and they focus on a lot of great topics like leadership, communications, marketing, and negotiations. And finally, as Harvard's Institute for Learning and Retirement, this is designed for retired adult learners ages 55 and older. It's a 550-person community with an average class size of 20 students, and they offer over 120 courses every year, um, some of which can be taken here on campus. 
So now that we've done a quick intro of DCE, I want to introduce you to enrollment management um, here at Harvard Extension School. This is comprised of two offices, enrollment services, which Justina and I work in, and enrollment requirements. So our teams combined are here to make your student experience as smooth as it can be from start to finish. So in enrollment services, we can help you with things like the course catalog, student account creation and logins, course registration and pre-registration, and helping you get connected to financial information, accessibility services, and other student support services. So we're kind of a one-stop shop um, to help you get your questions answered. And if it's something that we can't answer, we can definitely connect you to an, another office here at the Extension School that can assist you. Our enrollment requirements team is more focused on things that will impact a lot of students, especially those who are international. Um, this includes helping out with um, the visas process during the summer term. Um, the Extension School does not offer visas or I-20 certificates for visas, so that's something to keep in mind. They also process all of our English proficiency documentation for students whose native language is not English. And they also help in the processing of immunizations, um, which most recently includes the COVID-19 vaccinations. Um, so kind of a, a quick overview of what our teams are involved in here. If you are local to Cambridge or the Boston area and ever want to stop by and talk to us in enrollment services, we are offering summer walk-in hours. Um, those take place on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. So definitely encourage you to stop by um, if you're local and have any questions. So we wanted to go ahead and highlight before we dive into the registration content, what the registration dates are for students who may not be aware. Um, so a few weeks ago, we did post our 2022 to 23 cap, uh, course catalog um, at courses.dce.harvard.edu. So it's definitely available if you want to go ahead and start looking through the courses um, and see which ones you might be interested in registering for. Um, we've also gone ahead and posted our academic calendar for the 2022 to 2023 academic year too. So we definitely highly encourage you to go ahead and take a look through that. Um, that contains all the important academic and financial deadlines for the upcoming school year. When it comes to registration though, um, sometime in early to mid-July, we will be opening the pre-registration process. That will be a link that's posted in your MyDCE account. And it's a just a couple of quick screens of questions that you'll need to complete in order to actually be able to register when registration opens. If you are one of our admitted degree program candidates, which means that you've been formally admitted into a degree program, you're able to start registering for courses on Friday, July 15th at 9 a.m. Eastern time, so not too much longer from today. And any other students, such as our general course takers and our graduate and undergraduate certificate students can start to register for courses on Monday, July 18th at 9 a.m. Eastern time. It's important to note that registration will close on Thursday, August 25th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. This is also noted on the academic calendar. So students will have just over one month to complete all the steps that are involved in registration. All right, so now to kind of dive into the really detailed information of our presentation, which is all things registration. So I'm going to take you through the steps that you need to complete before registration, and Despina is going to walk you through everything that you need to do during and after registration. Everything that we're talking about in this section for before registration are items that all of you can start working on now before registration opens on July 15th and July 18th. Um, this involves creating your MyDCE account, which is your student account here at the Extension School, meeting the enrollment requirements for our courses, completing the pre-registration process once that's open next month, getting familiar with our enrollment policies, and also starting to review the academic calendar and putting important dates in your planner or in your phone, in your calendar, whatever you use to manage um, all of your different commitments throughout each week. So we'll look first at MyDCE. Um, MyDCE is the student account platform here at the Extension School. You can start to create your MyDCE account by using the link that you see on your screen, extension.harvard.edu slash login. Your MyDCE account is used for a lot of different things. You can update all of your personal profile information here. It's where you complete pre-registration and access the course registration system. You can confirm your course reg registration status and view your schedule. You can access the student finance portal to pay your tuition. You can connect to our online services system to take placement tests and to view your grades. You can also request transcripts via Parchment. Um, Parchment does offer an e-transcript option, so it makes that whole request process a lot faster. 
You can upload your English proficiency documents, and you can also view your student ID numbers um, as you need to reference them. On the left-hand side of your screen, you're seeing a screenshot of the homepage from your MyDCE account. So it's a pretty simple layout and very easy to follow along with. And once you complete the onboarding process, um, which is just the questions you answer as you're creating your student account, you'll be arriving on this homepage and that's how you know that you're all set and ready to go. Um, Despina and I wanted to include a lot of detail on this screen for you. So this is a good one to screenshot if you'd like to, um, but this is a step-by-step -step instructions on how to actually create your MyDCE account. When you go to the MyDCE login page, it should be pretty straightforward to follow along with creating your account. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to key in your email address and a password that is going to become what's known as your DCE key login credentials. This is what you're going to use to log into your MyDCE account for the first time, to complete the onboarding process, and to access course registration and pre-registration. Once you enter your email address and your preferred password, you are going to get an email verification. Um, so that will be sent to the email address that you're using. You'll just click on the verification link, and then it'll provide you with steps to get logged into your MyDCE account. Um, if you ever encounter any issues during this process, please reach out to our team in Enrollment Services and let us know. Um, there are some instances where various error messages will appear. Um, maybe a student is trying to create an account for the second time and there's a duplicate account on file. Um, maybe a student has a very similar name as another student and our systems aren't recognizing that. Um, there's always kind of a host of things that might happen, um, but our team is very familiar with them. So if you ever run into anything, send us a screenshot, we can take a look at it. Um, and if we can't resolve it, we can definitely pass it along to the team that can. Um, so just want to um, just briefly go over those instructions on how to set up your account. So now that we have talked about creating your MyDC account, um, let's talk a little bit about enrollment requirements. Um, first, I want to make a plug for our follow-up to today's webinar, which is Understanding Enrollment Requirements for the Fall. This webinar is going to be presented by our Enrollment Requirements team next Wednesday, July 6th from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern time. So I would highly encourage you if you haven't done so already to register for that webinar too, because um, that's going to be providing you with a lot of more detailed information that we won't be going through today about these enrollment requirements. Um, enrollment requirements includes a lot of things. Um, it includes English proficiency for students whose native language is not English, the test of critical reading and writing skills, which we refer to as the CRUISE test for short. Um, this is required for all of our writing intensive courses. The math placement test, which is an optional test um, just to test your math readiness if you're looking to sign up for a math course this fall. And immunizations as, um, as well. So uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about that um, later on, but there's definitely some immunizations that are required um, in order to take on-campus courses. All right, so next up is pre-registration in my DCE. Um, as I mentioned at the start of today's webinar, pre-registration is actually not open just yet, um, but it should be coming sometime in early to mid-July, but will definitely be live before the course registration begins. This is required to be completed by every student, so you're actually not going to be able to register for any courses until you complete pre-registration. If you happen to forget to do pre-registration and you're going in to register for courses, there will be an error message that pops up that alerts you that you need to complete pre-registration. And you can click on the link that's in that message to be brought back into your MyDCE account to complete that. Um, pre-registration actually does not involve registering for courses. It's just the process by which students confirm that their biographical and contact information is fully up to date before the start of each new term. It's a very fast process and usually only takes about five to 10 minutes to complete. Um, this screenshot is a little blurry, but hopefully it still provides you with a good sense of where pre-registration is. Um, so again, this is the homepage of your MyDCE account. It's the same screenshot that we showed you on the previous slide. But when pre-registration is ready, you are going to see directly above or directly below where your profile picture appears, the pre-register now link. So you can click on that link to get started with the process. All right, next is just um, becoming more familiar with our enrollment policies. Um, definitely something that's crucial um, to make sure that you don't run into any errors during the registration process. So we have a number of enrollment policies that are detailed out on our website, but I'm going to give you the highlights of each of these that you see on your screen. 
In terms of our minimum age policy, you do have to be 15 years or older in order to take an undergraduate credit course with us. And you have to be 18 years or older to take a graduate level course with us. When it comes to full and part-time enrollment, we do have four different tiers for the extension school. Full-time enrollment is 16 credits or four courses. The 75% enrollment is three courses or 12 credits. The 50% enrollment is going to be two courses, which is, or two courses, which is eight credits. Um, and anything less than two courses, so just one single course, is going to be less than half-time enrollment, and that'll be the equivalent of four credits. Um, so lots of different tiers there, but I think most students ask us what constitutes full-time enrollment, and that would be four courses or 16 credits. When it comes to maximum enrollment limits, the number of courses that you can take during the fall and spring term is four, so that would equal out to 16 credits. If you're trying to register for more than four courses, you will be presented with an error message. When it comes to time conflicts, our course search system and our registration system will flag you if any of the courses you're interested in have a time conflict. Um, so if you are registering for an on-campus course that has an overlapping time with a, a course that's taking place live on Zoom, then you would have to adjust your schedule so that those courses don't overlap. The only situation that you can have courses overlap is if one course is a fully on-demand course, just because you don't have a live attendance component with those courses. With course prerequisites, um, we always encourage students to view the course descriptions for their courses of interest. There is a prerequisites block on courses that have them tied to the course. Um, so it'll let you know if you need to take the test of critical reading and writing skills in order to register for the test. Um, and in certain situations, you may see a number of courses listed. Um, you de in most cases, you don't need to take the courses that are listed. They're just there to let you know what the professor is expecting when it comes to the knowledge base that the student should have for the course. But if you ever have any questions about prerequisites or things that you're seeing in the course catalog, you can always reach out to us and we can confirm um, your understanding of those. With course cancellations and schedule changes, there's always the chance that the course might be canceled um, for various reasons, or maybe the time has to be adjusted. Um, this is most likely going to be due to a change in the professor's schedule or commitments that the professor has. Um, but our registrar's office will email you if your course has any changes or cancellations so that you're able to add a new course in plenty of time. And finally, with transfer credits, um, I just want to call out for students who are interested in a degree program. If you're interested in an undergraduate degree program at the Extension School, you can transfer in a maximum of 64 credits from other institutions. And if you're interested in a graduate degree, you're actually going to have to take all of your classes for the graduate degree here through Harvard Extension School or, or Harvard Summer School. Transfer credits are not accepted for those programs. All right, and finally, before I pass over to Despina, um, just want to talk briefly about the academic calendar. So I mentioned that the academic calendar for next school year is now available online. So if you haven't had the chance to check it out yet, definitely do so. It is every student's responsibility to review this calendar and become more familiar with it. The calendar does break down every single important registration and financial date and deadline for the fall term, the January session, and the spring term. And every deadline that you see noted on the calendar is going to be a strict deadline. So we don't make adjustments to them and we don't make any exceptions. Um, so the reason the academic calendar is so important is because we don't want students to find themselves in the unfortunate position of not being able to sign up for a course that they were really interested in because they missed the deadline or being dropped from their courses because they weren't aware of the payment deadlines. So in order to make your experience as smooth as possible, please go ahead and start marking down all these important dates in your phone, um, in your planner, or on your calendar, just to make sure you're not missing anything crucial during this upcoming registration cycle. All right, so now that we've covered everything that you can start working on before registration, I'm gonna pass over to Despina to cover everything that happens during and after registration. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. We'll be talking about the steps you'll take during registration, which will include browsing your courses, adding or removing courses from your cart, choosing a credit status, registering for courses, making course changes, and troubleshooting. And one of the first things that you'll do is, uh, and a good uh, recommendation is to familiarize yourself with the course um, search and registration system. 
the uh, web address is right there, courses.bce.harvard.edu. And there are multiple ways to browse courses in the system. You can do a basic search, an advanced search, or a search that's particular to the degree and certificate that you're looking to pursue. Now, in terms of like the basic search, uh, what you would use here is the keyword box where you can enter any text that may appear. You can choose like a course title, a subject, the name of an instructor. Some examples that are listed here are like the Math E21A course, biology. Um, you can also select a term, the um, fall, January, spring, or summer. In terms of fall registration, you would be selecting fall 2022. And the part of the term is uh, the desired part of the term, a full term um, would be the option that you would select for fall course registration. And then you would click search and your results will appear in a panel to the right. Now, in terms of a basic search, um, if you look at the example here that we have, we put in the word math, extension fall term 2022, a full term. And the first course that comes up is the math E-3, the quantitative reasoning course. And you'll notice that an additional panel opens up on the right-hand side that gives you a wealth of information. And it's good to take some time to familiarize yourself with the course description because it includes information on the term, the format, the credit status, the section status, whether it's open or wait list, the amount of credits you'll earn for that course. It also reviews deadlines the instructor information. And if there's a hyperlink for the instructor, if you click on it, it will give you a short bio and contact information. And below, it will also give you the meeting information when that course meets and at what times, and um, if there are more than one section available for that particular course. Now, in terms of the advanced search, this is a search feature to search for courses with more detailed filters. Like for example, if you're looking for courses in a certain subject area, a certain format online or on campus, and you enter your criteria in the basic search above and then expand out the advanced search option as shown in the screenshot to the left. You use any of the provided filters to select the subject or participation option, et cetera. And then you click on search and those filters will be applied to your search criteria. Now, the example here of an advanced search is uh, we put in for you know extension fall term 2022, and we want it on campus courses. So the right hand side panel will show us all the on campus courses that are available. Um, the one that's selected here is the introduction to molecular and cellular biology. And you'll be able to see right there on the top, right below the, the uh, term, that this is an on-campus course. And down below, it will even tell you where that specific course will meet on campus. Now, in terms of the degree and certificate search, this is very helpful if you're pursuing like an undergraduate or graduate degree with us or an undergraduate or graduate certificate. You can choose that option in the search classes panel. And you'll click, um, you'll basically, uh, one thing I wanted to mention though is that the advanced search criteria doesn't, um, doesn't communicate with uh, the degree and certificate search. So you won't be able to use advanced search criteria alongside the degree and certificate search. So you want to enter in, select, Click, for example, like graduate degrees, click on the button that applies to you, select your desired program from the drop down menu, click the explore program button, and a new panel will appear with the option to explore courses that meet the applicable requirements. And then you select a program requirement to view the courses that may apply to that particular requirement. And you'll see what that looks like on the following page. For example, here we chose fall courses for the management degree. So here we would have clicked on graduate degree. Uh, we would have chosen management from the drop down menu and click explore program. And on the right hand side, you'll see that there are, it breaks it down to admission courses, degree courses. The related programs refers to certificates that stack alongside this particular degree. So if you were to click, for example, on financial or managerial accounting under admission courses, you'd be able to see what courses, if any, um, are available in the uh, fall term. 
Now, one thing I do want to mention is that if there are no uh, courses available in a certain category, um, then that category will not be listed here in the fall catalog. So if you, for example, see in the degree requirements page on the web page that it has a category that you then do not see in the course catalog, that's the reason why. That simply just says there are no particular admission courses in that particular category or degree courses for the fall term only. Now, in terms of um, after you've browsed the courses, you'd want to know how to add or remove courses from your cart. Now, the way that you add courses to your cart is you search for your desired course using the basic search, the advanced search, or the degree and certificate search options. And this particular example, for example, uses the basic search option. We're looking for the Expo E-5, which is the fundamentals of grammar course. So you put in Expo E5 and then click and you'll select the course. And it will give you more detailed information as we mentioned previously on the course itself. And then to add the course, all you need to do is just click add cart, make sure that you've selected your primary cart in the box below and click OK. After you've clicked OK, you want to select the credit status. In this particular case, it's only available at undergraduate credit, so that will be the only option, but there are some courses that are available at the graduate credit level and the non-credit level. You'll choose the appropriate credit status and you'll click Save Changes on the lower right. And after you click uh, Save Changes, you'll see that the course is listed there with a little shopping cart. And there you'll click on Submit Schedule and then Submit Registration. And you want to make sure that you take both of those steps because if you complete only Submit um, Schedule, that will show in your primary cart with a little shopping cart icon, but you have not finalized your course registration until you click on submit registration. So it's important to remember those two key steps. And then it's going to direct you to a confirmation message that your registration is submitted successfully. And you'll also know that by the little check mark that you'll see to the left of the course name. I do want to quickly mention too, if anyone after today's webinar is trying to add courses to your cart, the cart feature is actually not turned on yet for the fall term. So when pre-registration launches in early to mid-July, carts will also be turned on at the same time. Um, but hopefully this information is helpful to know in advance of the carts feature opening. And now, um, if you need to remove a course from your cart during the registration process, that's very easy. You just expand out the card section uh, and you select the course that you want to remove and just click on the remove from cart button and click OK to process the request. Now, things to keep in mind post registration. Um, to confirm your registration status and to view your course schedule, all you need to do is just click on the My DCE Student Portal and it will take you to your MyBCE student account. And after you log in, you'll be able to view your courses under the My Courses box, which is on the lower left-hand side of the student dashboard. If you're looking to make payments after you register, then you would just click on View Balance and Make a Payment, and that will take you directly into the Payments portal, into the Student Finance portal, where you'll be able to view your balance and make any necessary payments. Now, in terms of making course changes, let's say you'd like to change something that you've already selected. What you would do is um, one thing you want to keep in mind is that you want to make sure that you drop the course that you no longer wish to take first before you add a new course, because you want to avoid being charged for an additional course. And you need to make all course change deadlines as noted on the academic calendar. If you don't meet those deadlines, then you will, will not be able to make the changes that you want online. Now, in terms of like some troubleshooting steps, your registration may be prevented if you don't meet the enrollment requirements. For example, if you need to meet English proficiency and you haven't met that, then that will stop you from registering from a course. If a course requires like the test of critical reading and writing skills and you haven't taken and passed that test, then that will also stop you from registering from a course. You'll also be stopped if you don't complete pre-registration in MyPC, and that's very common at the beginning of our registration period. Then you'll get a message that will direct you back to the student account portal 
to go through pre-registration in order to then be able to register for your selective courses or your schedule doesn't comply with the enrollment policies. Um, if your registration isn't successful, you'll get a warning message displayed in your primary cart with a description of the problem. Another thing to keep in mind is if the total number of courses in your cart exceeds the maximum enrollment limit, and for the fall and spring, that's up to four courses, even if you don't plan to register for them all, then your course registration is going to fail. So you want to make sure that you clear your cart and try to register for the courses that you actually want to take. Now, in terms of after registration, some things to keep in mind is making your payment, claiming your Harvard key, meeting the immunization requirements, changing your credit status if necessary, dropping or withdrawing from courses, and of course, accessing your course websites in Canvas. Now, in terms of cost and financial aid information, the full payment deadline for the fall semester is Monday, August 15th. Course registration is still available after that date from the 16th of August to August 25th, but you'll have to make immediate payment on the same day that you register for your course. Otherwise, it will be dropped for non-payment. In terms of our tuition rates, the undergraduate credit courses are 1,980 per course. The graduate credit courses are 3,100 per course, and non-credit courses are 1,500 per course. One thing to note is financial aid isn't available for non-admitted uh, students and international students. It is available for admitted degree program students. Now, in terms of the payment deadlines, again, the full payment deadline for the fall term is Monday, August 15th. You can still register with immediate payment between Tuesday, August 16th and Thursday, August 25th. If you register for courses between July 15th and August 15th, then you need to pay your total balance owed for courses by 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on Monday, August 15th to avoid being dropped from your courses. And that includes any waitlisted courses as well. In terms of registering for courses between August 16th and August 25th, you need to pay your total balance owed upon registering for the courses to avoid being dropped from all of your courses, including those that you have paid for in full by August 15th. If at any time you have questions about your tuition bill or your payment, you can contact our student financial services team at 617-495-4293 or studentfinance at extension.harvard.edu. Now in terms of paying your tuition, you would log into MyPCE, click on the financial services button that will take you to the payment portal and uh, there you can do your balance and make your payments. Now, in terms of claiming your Harvard key, that's something very important. It's something you should uh, do right away after registering for your courses. Now, the way that Harvard key works is all students will receive an email about 24 to 48 hours after they register for a course for the first time, and they'll be assigned a Harvard University ID. If you miss this email, your Harvard University ID is always posted on your MyBCE dashboard. It's on the right-hand side of the dashboard next to your name, uh, next to the DCE ID. And you'll use this HUID number to claim your Harvard key login credentials at key.harvard.edu. Once you claim your Harvard key, you don't actually need to use your MyBCE key any longer. You can use the Harvard key to access all the systems that you'll need, the course websites in Canvas, the libraries, other digital databases, your MyBCD account, so it, and also to claim your g.harvard.email account. So that's why it's important to claim that key as soon as possible. Now, in terms of meeting immunization requirements, especially if you're intending to do an on-campus course, there will be a webinar next Wednesday on July 6th between 1 to 2 p.m. that will address all of those issues. There are a lot of the policies are being finalized for the fall right now, and they'll go into detailed information about immunization requirements. Now, all registered students who will have an on-campus presence must comply with Massachusetts and Harvard University regulations requiring proof of immunization against certain communicable diseases like COVID-19, and Massachusetts and Harvard University immunization requirements are strict and they differ significantly from other states or countries. Now, in terms of 
if you want to change like your credit status, let's say you registered for an undergraduate course and you want to take like uh, the course at the graduate level or at the non-credit level, one thing you want to make um, sure is that you're aware of what the um, deadlines are. And that's when it's critical to view the academic calendar. If you're waitlisted for a course, one thing to keep in mind is you will be unable to change your credit status until you've been moved off the wait list. And we're unable, unfortunately, to predict your chances of being moved off of a wait list for any course. In terms of changing your credit status, the process itself is fairly simple. You just log it to IPCE, you click on the course registration button, you select the desired course from your primary cart, you click the edit registration options button, you update your desired status, you save changes, and then you submit schedule and submit registration to complete your credit status change. And you would pay the difference if your new credit status has a higher tuition rate. If it has a lower tuition rate, then you'll be refunded the difference. Now, in terms of dropping and withdrawing courses, students can drop and withdraw from their courses similar to the credit status change uh, according to the deadlines on the academic calendar. The instructions are to log into MyPCE, click on the course registration button, select the desired course again from your primary cart, and click on the drop withdraw button located underneath the registration notes section. And again, similarly to registration and credit status changes, you need to submit schedule followed by submit registration to finalize your course drop. Refunds are processed on an ongoing basis by our student financial services team. So if you ever have any question on refunds, please uh, contact them directly. In terms of uh, another important step after registration is to access your course website in Canvas. Now in terms of accessing the course website, it, there is a, a um, tab for Canvas on your MyBCE dashboard. So you would just click um, Canvas and make sure that you're using your Harvard Key login credential. Now, additional um, items to note is everything we've discussed here today can also be found on your course registration page as indicated on the left-hand side. And it's important that you monitor your emails, um, your, in, your email inbox and your spam and junk folders for email communications. If you haven't already done so, you'd wanna add Harvard Extension School as a safe sender and avoid using any email accounts that may have stricter firewalls attached to them, such as the work or school email account. We rely very heavily on communicating with students via email, so it's important um, to, do, you know, to do these things and to monitor your emails carefully. In terms of the syllabi and the course websites, one thing you may notice, if you, especially if you claim your Harvard key early, is that the syllabi may not be available to view for courses until closer to the start of course registration and they're not published on Canvas until we receive the finalized copies from the instructors. Now, um, we will be going through a series of FAQs here, and I'll start with the first question, and we'll, we'll go in, <laughs> we'll take these along with uh, Sean. Now, the first question here that we've been asked is, are Harvard Extension School degrees the same as other degrees? And yes, they are. Um, Harvard Extension School is actually part of the 12 degree granting schools here under Harvard University. And um, we offer both undergraduate and graduate degrees. And they are equivalent to any uh, college or university degree you may receive um, through another institution. All right, for question two, how long does it take to complete degree and certificate programs at the Extension School? So the answer to this question depends on which program you're looking to pursue. So if you're looking to do an undergraduate degree, there isn't necessarily a time limit tied to this because there are a lot of courses involved. And we know that as students who majority are working full-time and balancing courses and other things in your lives, um, that it might be a little bit harder to get through all the classes. Um, it may take a few years. Um, so with the undergraduate degree programs, there isn't necessarily a tight timeline tied to that. When it comes to our graduate degree programs, these involve about 12 courses each. Um, some of the courses you are required to complete on campus, um, which is just something to note. But the moment that you're finished taking two degree applicable courses, that is when the five-year timeline for graduate 
degree completion begins. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, should still be plenty of time. We don't see students who struggle to meet that timeline, um, but that is in place for graduate degrees since it's less courses than the undergraduate degree programs. If you're looking to do an undergraduate certificate, um, most of these can be, or, or a graduate certificate, um, the, you do have a three-year timeline tied to that. Um, that timeline starts during the term that you're taking your first certificate eligible course. And most of these programs require anywhere from three to five courses. So definitely pretty, pretty quick to complete all of the degree or degree requirements that go along with that. And the next question is, does HES offer assistance to students with learning and or physical disabilities? And yes, we do through our accessibility services office. So if you do need an accommodation, it's best to get in contact with that team as early as possible. And their contact information, both their email and their phone number is listed on our website. You do also need to sign up through their portal in order to process an accommodation. But again, we recommend that you reach out to accessibility as soon as possible if, if you do need assistance in this area. All right, our next question is, does the Extension School provide I-20 certificates for on-campus study for international students? Um, Extension School does not provide I-20 certificates, but Harvard Summer School does. Um, so if you're an international student who is looking to study on campus, definitely keep an eye out for more information about Summer School 2023, um, which will be available on our website in late January. And uh, the next question is, does HES provide on-campus housing for students? Um, we actually do not provide on-campus housing in the fall and spring terms and the January session. Um, but there is information through the off-campus um, office concerning like any accommodation that may be available, any housing available outside of the university. All right, a question for waitlist. So if I'm waitlisted for a course, what are my chances of getting moved off of the waitlist for it? So as soon as a course hits its maximum enrollment limit, if there is one tied to it, then students are immediately starting to be placed on waitlist. Um, the length of the waitlist can vary based on the popularity of the course. Um, I've seen courses with waitlists as low as one people and some up to 20 people before because they are so popular. Um, there isn't necessarily a way to know exactly when you're going to be moved off of a waitlist for a course. The reason being is because it all depends on if students who are fully registered for the course decide to drop out of it. So if two students decided to drop a course, then the first two students on the wait list would be immediately moved into the course and receive a notification about this. So the timing can always vary. Um, I will say we probably see the highest number of waitlist movement happen after the drops for non-payment occur. Um, so since the payment deadline is going to be August 15th for the fall term, students who didn't pay will be dropped on August 16th. So there should be some waitlist movement happening that week. Um, if you ever are curious about your spot on a wait list, that is information that you as the student cannot see in your student account. But if you contact us here in Enrollment Services, we can look it up for you and let you know kind of what the chances might be of you getting off the wait list, um, as well as your current position. And the next question has to do with the on-campus experience um, policy for degree programs. And the question is, has the on-campus experience requirements policy for degree programs change now that courses are being offered on campus. Basically, the um, policy has gone back to the pre-COVID policy. So we're no longer providing like an exception for live web conference courses with the start of the summer term, because that's the first term that we're offering on-campus courses again, which will also be offered in the fall. So the, in terms of like how many courses you need to take for your particular degree, you want to check the degree requirements page it will list if there are like one course or two courses or three courses that you need to take in order to fulfill that requirement and you will not all of our degrees cannot be learned completely online there will be a um, on-campus requirement for each degree all right and our last question is what should i do if i encounter an error message when creating my my dce account 
So we talked about this a little bit at the very start of today's webinar. The best scenario would be to follow the prompts that the error message gives you, which oftentimes is going to tell you to contact our office and enrollment services for assistance. Um, so you should be provided with our phone number as well as an email address to reach out if you do encounter an error message. Um, I would say if you do decide to email us about the error message, including a screenshot or as much detail as you can about the error message that you're seeing is always super helpful. Um, in most cases, um, we can provide you with some troubleshooting tips. Um, but there are some instances where we do have to forward certain error messages along to our registrar's office to resolve for students. Um, but as much detail as you can give us about the error message as possible is always great just to expedite how quickly um, we can get the issue resolved for you. Um, so as we get ready to close, um, I just want to mention that we realized that you may still have a lot of questions. Um, it was a lot of content that we went through today and a lot of things to kind of sort through and get ready for. Um, we hope that we've been able to answer a lot of your questions that were submitted in the Q&A feature. Um, but if we didn't get to your question or you think of something after today, please reach out to us in enrollment services. Um, our office hours are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Um, again, if you're local, you can stop by for our walk-in hours, which are Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, we'll have staff at our front desk who can assist you with a wide range of different questions and issues that you might be experiencing. You can reach us on, on the phone at 617-495-4024 um, or by email at inquiry at extension.harvard.edu. And every Thursday um, between 12 and 1 p.m. Eastern time, we offer virtual office hours appointments. So if you're interested in setting up a Zoom session, um, feel free to email us at the extension account on your screen. And we can provide you with more information about how this works, as well as the link to sign up for a future time. Um, I will say right now, our virtual office hours for the month of July are completely full. We've gotten a lot of demand for those, um, but we will be adding the August sessions probably sometime in early, or probably late July. So definitely keep a, a lookout for those times to appear soon. And some additional resources for students. Um, so if you're new, brand new to Harvard Extension School, definitely get in contact with our office if you have any questions about getting started. If you're a current student and you're working towards a, one of our degree programs, we encourage you to get in touch with our admissions office. Um, they offer virtual office hours um, and their email address is provided on the screen if you ever have questions for them. And if you're looking to pursue a certificate or have already started to do so, um, Certificates does offer virtual office hours on Wednesdays from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern time. That's just an open Zoom room that students can pop into to ask questions. And there are separate email addresses if you have questions pertaining to undergraduate or graduate certificates. And finally, um, just a recap once again about the upcoming fall 2022 registration dates. So in early July, pre-registration as well as the CARTS feature is going to open up to all students um, in their MyDCE account. Um, so hopefully that will be live sometime um, the week or two following the 4th of July holiday that's coming up. On Friday, July 15th at 9 a.m. Eastern time, all of our admitted degree candidates can register for their desired courses. Um, so you do have to have already been formally admitted into a degree program in order to start on July 15th. On Monday, July 18th at 9 a.m. Eastern time is when course registration will open up to all of our other students. Um, this includes general course takers and our certificate students. And registration will close on Thursday, August 25th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. And once again, um, just because we can't stress this enough, definitely take some time to start looking over the academic calendar. All of these dates are there as well as all other important dates and deadlines that you need to know for the fall term and beyond. So again, this webinar was recorded today, um, so we will be sending it off to be closed captioned for accessibility purposes. Um, so once that is done, everyone who registered for the webinar today will be receiving a link to view the recording. And the recording will also be posted on the Harvard Extension School YouTube page as well. And if you do have time to join in next week, Wednesday, July 6th from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, our enrollment requirements team will be hosting their webinar um, on understanding enrollment requirements for the fall term. So we encourage you to tune in for that if you would like to learn more about immunizations, English proficiency requirements, the test of critical reading and writing skills, and the math placement test. So a lot of great information will come out of that webinar. That should be a really nice follow-up to the content that we provided today. 
So on behalf of the Enrollment Services team and Harvard Extension School, I just want to thank everyone for taking the past hour um, to join us today to learn more about what you can do to get prepared for fall registration. Um, we thank you so much for attending, and we hope to see you on campus or online soon. Thanks for attending today. Enjoy the rest of your day.